Hey guys, I'm really looking forward to create this project. 2D framed artwork from the game Metroid Dread. Metroid was a franchise I never experienced as a child and never started playing as an adult. And I feel bad about it. Metroid and Samus to me is like this aunt you see once or twice a year. You know her, you see her in some crossover games together with Mario and Donkey smashing each other's heads, but you don't have anything to do with her. But maybe you secretly admire her. I want to change this. The two trailers from Metroid Dread got my attention. Not only because it's a highly anticipated franchise in my beloved Nintendo neighborhood, but because it's another great 2D title in a world where you get a 3D overload. Okay, I'm playing mini motorways right now on my tablet. This is also not 3D. We are creating Summers right now. I figured out it should be a very small scale and to educate myself, to give me some restrictions and rules, I started creating on this coin. It's a quarter dollar, you know the size, and it makes sure that my Samus doesn't get too big. We are working with only a few colors. We have metallic red, white, silver, black, bright blue and green, and some dark blue as well. And that's it for the new suit we saw in the trailers from Samus. Personally, I think I liked the, uh, the orange suit the most, but this one also looks okay, I guess. The plasma beam, which got some new updates and abilities, which we will cover later in today's video. I'm removing the right arm again to get her into the position of running, running away from this Chozo robot. <laughs> For her boots we take a thin layer of black, attach some bright blue to it and well we got some shoes. This is the huge advantage on creating on such a small scale that you sometimes need only a piece of clay and the detail is finished. Summers is almost finished. We are getting in the last details with green clay and maybe we make her laser beam a little bit bigger. Okay, this looks a little bit better. Then we have the two boosters on the back side. In the trailer we are introduced to Summers' new Ian ability, Flash Shift, where she can travel a short distance in the blink of an eye and whether you're on the ground or in the air or even in fights I think speedrunners will be very happy about this ability <laughs> because you can make it multiple times in a row and now let's put Samus into the oven Freshly baked Samus! <laughs> what a crazy scale! Yeah, we bring in some color. We have some beautiful blue lines on the suit and also with this metallic blue on the arms and the suit itself. Let's remove this piece of wood. And after painting and drawing the last lines on the back side. The plasma gun is ready and the other arm is being attached again. Look at that. She's very quickly. From the first trailer we got this killer robot, this Chozo robot, probably because this plays an important role also in the second trailer. And oh my god, I loved these scenes so much with this hunting 
robot and I wanted to recreate this scenery. It looks like a Demogorgon in a way. The head with this red bright eye is finished and we can now work on the torso. For the legs I thought we will use some paper clips. I have some black coated paper clips and they hopefully will work pretty well as the legs and arms. All we have to do is then create some very tiny versions of the claws for these arms and legs where they will be attached after oven hardening. And in one scene in the first trailer we also see this killer robot um, grabbing Samus uh, after hunting her down. I'll pinch some tiny holes into these claws so that we have an attaching point for the paper clips. These will be the legs and I tried to create a posture where the robot is running. We will see how this turns out. <laughs> okay, I made the legs a little bit thicker than the arms by adding some dark silver clay. And this is the spine. We need an attaching point for the legs and I think we'll just stick in some wire which we can remove after oven hardening. So this is our placeholder for the legs. Okay, last details on the arms. And then we need a beautiful neck for the head. And also, I didn't solve this detail in the trailer, what the neck looks like. I thought it would be nice to imitate some wires. Wires coming out of this body and attached to the head. Now let's put this killer robot into the oven. Freshly baked killer robot. And we do some painting on these parts. I'm coloring with the white. I'm using white on the parts where clay would have been too thick, but still getting this robotic look. <laughs> have you seen the presentation of the Tesla robot? I haven't, but I guess the robot looks something like this. We painted the last details on the spine and now we need some super glue for the joints. Okay. Removing the placeholder wire. Don't forget su to subscribe. Bob, I can't speak anymore. Hit the bell! The other leg is also attached and we're almost there. We need the head and the claws to be assembled. Let's remove them from my ruler. Now just a little bit of super glue into these tiny, tiny holes. So much could go wrong. Okay, it's like <laughs> putting on shoes. And the head is being assembled. Look at that, guys. It's the robotic version of a Demogorgon. <laughs> Now, let's work on the level design itself. I made some screenshots. We may need some weapons. And some cardboard. When you look carefully at this scenery, I see three levels behind each other. We have in the front these black areas where Samus is able to jump and run on. And 
and this will be the foreground of our framed artwork. In the middle ground we have also a lot of details. These gas tanks, the tiny cave, we'll take care of these parts later. And then we have the background, this steamy, blurry background, which contributes to the atmosphere in this passage. When I first started planning this framed artwork, the hardest part was to decide which area to pick from this trailer where to make a screenshot and also what to leave out. I ended up creating this part of the whole level, the tiny pedestal covered by the platform. We have a beautiful tiny cave with a ventilator and some wires and pipes some steamy, foggy areas and also a tiny elevator with bright blue arrows. And this will give us plenty of chance to create many details with clay after we unwrapped the frame. As you probably know, this is not my first framed artwork. The most challenging part about creating with clay within a frame is the size. The size is frightening because you know you have to create a whole level, a whole world. And this is where cardboard comes into play. You can create structures very quickly with cardboard. Make it thicker, shortening just a little bit with a clip of some scissors. All the elements which I am creating with cardboard will have a depth of two centimeters and we need our beloved hot glue gun. We are assembling the platform, I'll call this part the bridge, so that you know for reference which area I'm talking about. Right under the bridge we have a beautiful cave. And this cave is in the middle ground, where this bridge is in the foreground. Also underneath the bridge is this pedestal. We have two doors connected to this pedestal on the left and right side. This is the platform, the moving, we call it elevator in the upper right corner. And this is what the final level design will look like. Now let's work on the middle ground, now that we have finished the foreground. I printed out the exact same screenshots which I used before, but this time we are not focusing, we are not trying to cut out the foreground, but the middle part. It's a huge piece right in the middle and on the left side we have these two stripes to frame the whole scenery. For some parts I created a second layer of cardboard to give it some more depth. Look at that. Ah! Oh, I really like what I see. <laughs> it, well, it could be any jump and run game, but it has this certain type of uh, jump and run 2D atmosphere already. This will be the cave right under the bridge and we have to close it. We just glue a piece of cardboard to the back side. For these two gaps on the left side there will be a tube later attached and this is just another door leading to nowhere. 
We somehow finished the cardboard part. Now let's take some different materials. We will take some wire, pieces of wood and some different types of cardboard to create the illusion of a technical room, level. It could be a spaceship, it could be deep underneath the surface. The tubes, let's take these wooden sticks for that. Okay, now they are connected to the system. Then we have some tiny platforms and wires hanging from the ceiling. The more we create right now as reliefs on the whole scenery, the better it will look in the end when coloring. On the right side of these tubes will be the elevator with the blue arrows, the br bright blue arrows. I don't know how to create them. Maybe we'll bring in some LED lights, maybe I take just some bright blue cardboard. Well, who knows? Let's make some space for this tube as well. Yeah, I looked at certain details within the screenshots I made from the trailer, but to be honest, at a certain point, I just started playing around with pieces of cardboard and pieces of wood. I even used some leftover parts from the cutting process because it was looking good. <laughs> and this will be the surface of the ways and paths where Samus will be running on. The idea is to glue these tiny pieces right next to each other, building a path and still leaving some gaps between them. Let's take the hot glue gun. We only need a stripe of hot glue sauce. And now let's try to create this path, this metallic looking path. Well, not right now, but after coloring. We have an extra level on the pedestal where we are gluing these wooden pieces, cardboard pieces, <laughs> wooden cardboard pieces. Well, it looks like a way. And this is all matters. Now let's take a toilet paper roll and we'll glue it right at the ceiling on the left side. One year ago, I created a whole island on a toilet paper roll. Still love and remember this project, Animal Crossing. And first time we are putting all the parts now assembled into the frame. Now also the pedestal. And then we have the elevator on the upper right. And of course, the bridge, which finally creates this tiny cave. I had some more leftover pieces from the cardboard and some tubes and pipes. And Samus is already checking out the level. <laughs> oh, I should stop playing around before it's finished. Let's start the coloring process. We have white, black, silver and copper and a little bit of yellow. The main color for this scenery will be a warm gray and Kirsten gave me the tip to put in just a little bit of yellow to make it a little bit warmer and to get this weird greenly gray and I also threw in some silver to make it look more metallic. And let's see what we can do with this beautiful color. I 
I expect the color to blend the different materials into each other, that it all gets a dark surface, but still with a lot of details and reliefs. I'm using the brush and let it dance around until everything is colored. Later, when the final artwork is finished, every piece of unpainted cardboard will be a distraction. So I'm really taking my time here. Some highlight effects on certain spots, like this vault door and pipes. I think these are some brass doors. This is my interpretation at least. And then I'll highlight some of these parts and make them even brighter after the first layer of paint, acrylic paint, has dried. For the pathway I decided to cover up the cardboard texture, because it was also a little bit distracting. And now let's highlight certain spots with a more metallic mixture of the color. And this is what it looks for now. Let's now start working on some tiny details made with clay. We have tubes. Actually, a lot of tubes. While I already created some with uh, wooden chopsticks and even cardboard, I wanted to emphasize some of them at certain spots and to get in a higher level of detail. We have many tiny counters and switches and control panels and what else it all could be. We have this vault door which will hopefully blend in perfectly with the cardboard in the middle ground right on top of the bridge right next to this control panel I saw some gas bottles in yellow and red after oven hardening we'll paint some more details onto these and this will be the final door, the exit. And look at this color. It's neon yellow. I have some neon colors. They are very bright. Plus you can also use a black light to get them glowing in the dark. And this is what I try to do for the final shot of the artwork. And then we have some more technical stuff and I have no idea what I am creating, but neither has the map designer, because I think he was just doodling around, creating some technical looking stuff. And this is what makes the atmosphere perfect in a level like this one. When you have watched the trailer from Metroid Dread, you know that we'll also get an underwater level, shooting on a whale creature. We see a palace where Samus is using this frozen beam. <laughs> we see some magnetic walls where Samus can climb on. Um, yeah, I'm really wondering what the controls will be like when you have 10,000 different abilities. Look at that. It looks so beautiful, adding now the clay parts to the cardboard part. Yeah. And now the elevator with the clay parts, the blue arrows. And I'm so curious what it will, will look like in the black light. Now two doors left 
the important one, the exit, and this is just a random door. <laughs> and with a black pen, I am creating some more technical corners and edges. And we take this piece and fill in a battery pack for the LED lighting. I can already tell that the atmosphere of this artwork will be ah, amazing. I just love mixing LED lights with clay and cardboard. Step by step, I am deciding where to put the lighting. We have the ventilator and to get a more softer light, I'm using this transparent foil made a rough surface with a sandpaper and look at that now I get off the ventilator because at first I thought I'd use it on white clay then we need some red spots coming from the top so I'm just coloring the LEDs gluing the ceiling together we have also two lights coming from underneath, underneath, out of the bridge, to lighting the protagonists. Let's stick it in. This light will later illuminate Samus. Okay. Oh, it looks so dark. Let's put the frame around. Gluing the elevator and the exit into the frame, and we need a background. Hmm. We need a background. Andy helped me with some heavy Photoshop, removed some elements out of this background. And now we can get everything in line see what it will look like in the end okay carefully i don't want to screw it up now closing the frame last working step the robot and samus will be glued into the scenery the hunter and the hunted guys I guess that's it I hope you enjoyed this video. This was so much fun creating this framed 2D artwork from Metroid Dread. What do you want to see next? Leave it down in the comments. Have an amazing weekend. Bye.